Well, that down there. Get up, boys. <laughs> of some sorts, but it was um, George Kasoulis as a video maker, filmer, and also runs Sunday Hardware, was a big advocate of pushing for Jack. He always kind of had these like big dreams. I feel like he wanted to be a pro skater, you know? I think it was around the time when we were working on this Nike video, when I sort of started just working there. Something switched in him, turned him from being like a little 15 year old to being really serious about skating and really determined. That's around the time when there was talks of him getting on passport and that all sort of happened and then ever since then it's just been non-stop progression I would say. Jack and I'd say this about like Nick Bazzario as well they can like sell you any trick the rawness it makes it look so fucking good to put him on the team we surprised him after a Nike premiere upstairs at the pub I made him like this bathrobe and put it on him and made him a cake and asked if he'd be on the team Around that time where the team was, it was, to be honest, getting the blessing off every single person. So, yeah, everyone was in huge agreeance. We're lucky with that. I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'm a little bit nervous approaching an entire team to see if they want some kid involved, you know. But, yeah, everyone backs him to the nines even before he was even on. time he went to Europe was when we took him to Greece when he first just jumped on the team you know he was 18 and we took him to Athens there was a handful of spots he just knew he had to do something at because he knew now was the time Mindset's in a very good place when he's uh, in another country or somewhere out of his local zone for sure My first time in Australia and it's when we did the Carhartt Passport tour in Northern Territory. I'd seen the clip of Passport in Athens so I knew who Squish was and had seen him skate and then got to Uluru where the rock is and that was where we all met up and that was where I met him for the first time. It was really cool when you go on trips and there's new people and you kind of get to know them and stuff. I kind of instantly got on with him. You go on a trip with someone that's on the same team as you, you meet, skate for like 10 days, and then you go back home. But when I did that Northern Territory trip, it was just like a really good way to get to know him. After that trip, I went back to Sydney, and then I stayed at his parents' house a while, which was so nice, because his parents are lovely. They all just looked after me really well, and kind of spent a lot of time driving around Sydney with Squish in his car. And that whole trip in Australia that I did when I first met him, it was really nice. We became really good friends just from that. He was amazing then. It was before he was like Squish, Squish, but you could tell. I think people had seen glimpses of him, but people just have those parts, don't they? And I think that was just that part for him. I'm not too much of a filmer, only on the 16 and Super 8, but yeah, Jeff took it on mostly the filming in there. It was a joint sort of venture to edit. 
we knew as soon as it started stacking up Jack's footage that it was like, oh, fuck, this is actually turning into something really special, you know? We were so lucky to take the video around the world a bit and people did lose it for uh, his footage. We used, like, a local band, Low Life. Everything just made so much sense as we started editing it. It was a short, punchy edit and couldn't be more happy how it all came together and pushed Jack in the right direction, I feel, as well. A bit, and that's where he filmed like pretty much all of that. I feel like he did it on one trip. I was working at Slam at that time. I would go to work and they would come in and I'd hear about what fucking Squish did that day. It was just that kind of situation when there's all this stuff that's just waiting to be done and he just did it all. stuff's really valuable as much as it sounds sort of kooky to say go somewhere and do monumental tricks people suddenly know who you are As a joke was like, I'll see it, I'll skate it. He just did it all. It was so easy for him. It became a funny thing of just trying to take him everywhere to see if he could lock a spot up, and he did. Just how much the I guess at the time I didn't realise, but it's pretty legendary that he just came to London and just did all that stuff. <laughs> himself to I guess have a clear goal and vision he's not trying to cop out and get a trick for the sake of getting a trick he's going to spots aiming high getting tricks that people I guess notice these days one trick that stands out is almost worth more than a video part Jack's trying to do a video part full of good tricks that people have fucked up just has this sort of demonic look in his eyes, looking at the spot, sort of destroying it within just staring at it. This trance of some sort inside his mind when he's battling a spot. There's really never any sort of uh, angst. As soon as that's completed, he's just the most stand-up, beautiful human being. a little bit over time like gnarly skaters they sort of like i want to do this and you're kind of like yeah are you sure fuck i don't really want to watch this like i have to film it but it's kind of like scary to watch jack he can like switch to that next level and it sort of seems safe you know everyone thinks he's a lunatic and yes he is but it's calculated lunacy <laughs> 